Lastly, I want to tell you a little story that I think really sums up how important it is, especially as husbands, as fathers, as men, our role. Does anyone here remember a guy named Todd Marinovich? Okay. Well, just recently I watched, they had a uh, 30 for 30 on, on ESPN. Absolutely love those. Those are some of my favorite things to watch. Well, Todd Marinovich was known actually as the robo quarterback. He was considered the perfect athlete, the perfect quarterback, so much so that even in high school, he had his face on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Just an incredible, incredible person. But when you come to find out more about his story, his father was actually an NFL strength, strength coach for the Steelers. And he basically kind of formed his son into this athlete. Um, there's the, the old legend saying that he didn't have a pacifier to suck on, he gave him a football. Um, but he would actually set up these balance beams and Olympic rings and all this stuff in his backyard and he would have Todd going through these, these motions and through these exercises to, to learn all the different balances and necessities that it comes to be a good football player. There's even a legend saying that, that Todd never had a hamburger or a cheeseburger until he was 21. <laughs> but in high school, Todd broke record after record. Uh, and then later he ended up joining the, the Trojans at USC, where he actually led the way to a Rose Bowl win. However, there was a little bit of a dark side to this glamorous, fame-filled life that he was experiencing. During late high school, Todd started to hate the limelight. And he started, started to find solace in partying and drugs. There were times when he would party all night and then pop a few pills the night right before the game and then go on and play. He was so good that the, the drugs and the alcohol and the pills didn't even affect him. People didn't even notice. That's how good of an athlete he was. And this continued kind of in the shadows throughout all of his college career. After the Rose Bowl win, Todd finally went on to play in the NFL. In fact, he was chosen ahead of Brett Favre, um, and he was chosen by the Oakland Raiders. And unfortunately, now he had even more money to go out and party and, and spend on drugs. And so he went out and out and out, and all of a sudden, the NFL started to notice this problem. And so they ended up suspending him, um, and they let him take a year off. He went through rehab. He went through a whole lot of emotional uh, um, um, uh, problems and kind of got his life in order. Then he came back to the NFL and again was great. He came back, just killed it. He was there for two years and then quit suddenly. Very young in his career, very easily could have gone on to be just as good or better than Brett Favre, uh, Troy Aikman, you name it. <laughs> and. What happened later, this is what really struck me when I watched this 30 for 30, because there's a small little quip in it that you don't even really notice in the, in the grand scheme of the, of the episode. But they asked him, why did you leave? You know, you could have had it all. You finally got your life in order. You could have, you know, been a billionaire as good as you were. Why did you leave all of a sudden? He said, well, after all of these years of toil and, and striving to be the perfect athlete, my father finally told me he was proud of me. And honestly, that's all I've ever wanted. I didn't need the fame anymore. You see, gentlemen, you have no idea how much simply telling your boy, simply telling each other, you're a good man and I love you, how much that's going to hit the heart of every single man you might come into contact with. It's simply a reality. We desire this. That's why scripture says iron sharpens iron. Because we need that. So I want to challenge you to pick that up. Encourage each other. Most especially encourage your family. Because we no longer live in a time, as I've said millions of times in this little 30 minute thing, we don't live in a time anymore where we can sit by and just hope that things end out all right. The time is now to get closer and closer to Jesus through this amazing faith that we have.